Hello everybody and welcome back to another anatomy tutorial. Last week we looked at the anatomy of the elbow joint on x-rays and I mentioned in that video that we would have a separate video looking at the elbow ossification centers. So here's that video. I'm going to show you how to recognize the six different ossification centers and in which order they should appear in the normal development of a child and at what age we should expect those different ossification centers to appear. Now why do we even bother learning these ossification centers? Is it just to be asked in exams or to show off to colleagues that we know the order in which they appear and obviously it's neither of those and the main reason we learn these ossification centers is because when children fracture around the elbow joint many of the ossification centers one can look like fractures and aval sections of bones can look like ossification centers and if we know the order that those ossification centers appear we can confidently say yes this is a fracture or no this is actually an ossification center so you may have heard the mnemonic Crito. Now I'm not a great believer of mnemonics, but here's a time when learning a mnemonic is really going to help you. So as we learned in last week's lecture about the elbow joint, if you haven't watched it, I'll link it above. We have six different sections here. The first is our capitellum, that's mentioned by C. Then we have our radial head, our internal epicondyle, our trochlea, our lecronon, and our external or lateral epicondyle. Now I'm going to show you how to identify them now on these different images and then mention the order in which they appear. So the first one that appears is our capitellum, small head, capital, our main one. It's an easy way to remember that that comes first, the capitellum. We can see the capitellum here. This is a two-year-old child. There's no other ossification centers. This is all cartilaginous tissue here. Then as the child gets older, we develop our radial head. So our capitellum is what articulates with our radial head. We've got that shallow radial head fossa, our rounded capitellum articulating like that. We mentioned in the last lecture that the radius allows for that pivot joint. This is our capitellum and radial head. So they go together. The capitellum comes first, then the radial head, as it makes sense. Then we develop our internal or our medial epicondyle here. Now we know that the radius is lateral and our ulna is medial, so we must always remember that. It's going to be easy to start thinking that this is medial here. No, this is medial on this side. So capitellum, radial head, internal or medial epicondyle. And then we have our trochlea and our lecronon developing at very similar times. Our trochlea here is part of the humerus, remember. It's not part of the ulna. Trochlea here, part of the humerus, and then our lecronon is part of the ulna. That lecronon goes into that lecronon fossa posteriorly. It's an attachment for our tricep muscles, and our trochlea allows for the trochlea notch of the ulna to, like a pulley, rotate in that hinge joint, allowing that smooth hinging motion of our elbow joint. And then lastly, we end off with our external epicondyle or our lateral epicondyle. Remember, that's on the side of the radius. So it's really easy, you just follow that order. And uh, another easy way to remember this is that our capitellum and our radius, they articulate with one another. Our trochlea and our lecronon are also in the same articular surface there. So those are joined together. It leaves us with our internal epicondyle and our external epicondyle. I'm going to show you why that becomes important. The order of this becomes important later. Now what ages are we expecting these uh, centers to appear. Many people learn it in the simple way by going one, going up the odd numbers. So one, three, five, seven, nine, eleven. And you'll get by by doing that. Uh, it's not as accurate as the method I'm going to show you now. And I would recommend trying to learn this, especially if you're going to write a primaries exam or a core exam, to learn the slightly more complicated way because you're going to be a little bit more accurate. Maybe in your practice, once you've had years and years of experience. You're going to have the age of the child on the scan already. That's fine. But for exams, maybe learn this method, which is 1, 5, 7, 10, 10, 11. And you can see that our trochlea and our lecronon often develop at a very similar time. And the way I can remember this is T and O makes 2. So these two develop at the same time, 10. So our capitellum develops first, and there's quite a period of time before our radial head and our internal epicondyle develop. And then our trochlea, our lecronon, and external or lateral epicondyle develop between the ages of 10 and 11. You're going to be a bit more accurate in that uh, assessment of bone age. Now, girls often develop earlier than boys, up to two years earlier. So that goes without saying that these numbers are very flexible, and we're never going to be super accurate when trying to determine age from an elbow radiograph. 
So if you're going to take one thing from this talk, let it be this, that your internal epicondyle should always develop before your external epicondyle. It should actually always develop before the trochlear olecranon and external epicondyle. But if you can't see an internal epicondyle and you can see an external epicondyle, then there's something wrong. You need to go looking for a fracture, most likely an avulsion of that internal epicondyle. Now there's a saying in English, I before E except after C. This is a good way to remember it. I comes before E. So we have this saying in, in English, I before E. It's not a very good thing because there's actually more words that have E before I. But when it comes to remembering that the internal comes before the external, it's a great way to remember that. So we're going to have a look at two different cases. So the first case here, we're going to go through together. We're going to look at the different ossification centers and see if there's any abnormality that we can find. So here we have our humerus coming to our radius and our ulna. We can see our large capitellum here, and that articulates with our radial head. Those are both normal. Then we should look for our internal epicondyle. Now the internal epicondyle normally overlaps slightly with this medial portion of the humerus. Can't see an internal epicondyle here, so we know. Can we see an external epicondyle? Yes, we can. So we know I before E, there should be an internal epicondyle. We can see here, now you might be tempted to say this is the trochlea, uh, but it is a little bit far away from the humerus. So let's have a look at the lateral radiograph here. We can see our capitellum that articulates with our radial head. We uh, can also see our olecranon here. And if you look here now, we can see our trochlea forming here. So we know that this bony fragment that we see here is not our trochlea. And we can see on the previous x-ray we were missing our internal or our medial epicondyle. Here is our medial epicondyle. It used to be here and it's avulsed. Got a whole flexes of the forearm and pronators of the forearm and when we land on an outstretched arm that can avulse that uh, medial epicondyle. Or if this ulna dislocates posteriorly we can also get this avulsion of our internal or our medial epicondyle. So it's really important. This patient is going to need surgery. They're probably going to need an ORF, an open reduction, an internal fixation. And missing something like this has severe consequences for the growth and development of that child in the elbow joint. Let's look at one last case. Now this is the kind of case that could come up in your primaries or part one exams. They ask you to estimate the age of this child. So again, let's go through it together. We can see our capitellum here. So we know that they're older than the age of one. Let's identify it on the lateral. There's our capitellum. We can see our radial head, radial head here. So we know that they're older than the age of five. We can see our internal or our medial epicondyle on the side of the ulna. You see how it just overlaps that humeral head. On the external, often we don't get an overlapping like that. That's another um, thing to note when you're looking at scans. Here I can't see a trochlea and I can't see an olecranon. There's definitely no olecranon on the uh, lateral x-ray. So if we go by our age classifications, 157, 157, so they're older than the age of 7 and likely under the age of 10. We've got no trochlea and no olecranon. So in the exam I would answer that this patient is between the ages of 7 and 10. Now, if we were to use that other system, the 135, the odd numbers going up, we'd go 135. We would estimate that this patient is between the age of 5 and 7. You can see how there's a lot of variation. And really, for an exam, learn the slightly more complicated system. Get more accurate. And this patient, in fact, was 8 years old. So it's not that difficult. We're going to go through step by step. C-R-I-T-O-E, make sure that your internal epicondyle or your medial epicondyle appears before the trochlear olecranon and external epicondyle or your lateral epicondyle. So I hope that's helped. Whenever you're faced with a pediatric x-ray of the elbow, go through your mnemonic. If there's something that's awry, look for an avulsed fragment or look for a fracture within the elbow joint. And then look for other signs of a fracture that we mentioned in our previous x-ray on elbows. Look at the radiocapitella line, the anterior humeral line, and the raised fat pads. And those can be used as extra evidence that there's something amiss within this x-ray. So until next time, I'll see you all in the next anatomy video. Goodbye, everybody.